We are in Algarve in Portugal attending a Market Hub conference organized by HBX Group. And next to me is Javier Zabala, COO of HBX Group. Thank you for being with us. My pleasure. Today, during your presentation, I think you tried to answer the a million euros question. You spoke about AI and how it can be implemented in the travel industry. I think everyone wants to listen. So, how can we implement AI in the travel and hospitality industry? It's a big question. Um, I can tell you what we are, the approach we are taking at mm -hmm. HVX. So, first of all, uh, the way we look at it is trying to resolve specific needs, specific problems, specific opportunities, starting small, growing from there, iterating. And we also partner up quite a lot with specialized players who are uh, very savvy in specific areas of uh, AI so that we can combine our skills and we can speed up uh, the process and the, and the time to market. More specifically, if I look at HBX and uh, what we are doing specifically also in operations and the way we are transforming travel operations, there's a number of very, very interesting use cases. So what we are seeing is probably the biggest value right now we are seeing it in customer service because we are able to speed up the resolution of cases. We can accelerate the, the response times to our customers. With that, we improve the experience of the customers while at the same time we improve efficiency. And we believe this is a very nice recipe in terms of being more efficient while providing better service to customers. If I'm not wrong, you have introduced your own uh, chatbot, a lady called Olivia, if I'm not wrong, yes? Correct, so our, okay. our AI, uh, we call Olivia our uh -huh. AI platform. It's not only for chat, but it works across channels. Okay. So uh, chat, emails, uh, web tickets, and we are also about to release the phone channel. Uh, and then every query goes through the AI uh, solution. We understand the intent or what the customers are asking from us or what they need us to, to do. We combine that with information and data that is coming from our back office and our CRM. And with that, either we can respond automatically to our customers in seconds, or we can organize the teams, uh, the work of our teams, already knowing what the customers are asking from us. So it helps a lot accelerate the resolution of the queries from our customers. Customers, people can be sometimes unpredictable. You can never say what they are going to ask. So you have created another model where a machine is talking to a machine. How you call it a voice twins? Voice if I'm not voice wrong. Tense. So it was an AI bot uh, creating scenarios of uh, customer needs, discussing with Olivia and trying to find answers. Am I correct? So we have, we have uh, created a solution that is a vo what we call a voice twin, as you said uh -huh. exactly. And then we can use it in different um, scenarios or different use cases. One of the nice ones is um, voice bot to human, mm -hmm. and we use it for training purposes. So mm -hmm. every new customer service, customer service agent that joins the business now can go through a really scalable training process because we can uh, help them by creating 100 calls, 200 calls, as many as we want with very, very low cost and creating hundreds of scenarios, different styles, different languages, different levels of difficulty. So they can train as much as they need before going and taking real calls from customers. But we can also use similar uh, solutions for other purposes. Mm -hmm. Like we can contact our partners to retrieve a specific information. And if the partners are also using AI technologies and voice bots, we may have our voice bot talking to the voice bot of the partner. So that creates interesting situations. That, that you said now that if the customers, if your partners have uh, also these technologies, when you started your presentation, you mentioned a, a survey that said that um, most of the entrepreneurs, they are not so happy from the pace of implementation, adopt yeah. adaptation of, of technologies, right. of AI technology. Yeah, right. I think so it's not the industry is following or not following that fast? I think this is happening across industries where everyone sees a big opportunity with AI and specifically with generative AI, then to land that into specific use cases and to extract financial value from it, it's much more difficult. So what we see is most of the, actually around two thirds of the business leaders show some, some kind of 
dissatisfaction or frustration mm -hmm. with the speed in which their companies are adopting AI mm -hmm. technologies. And it's, it's not that easy. So it's not that easy to integrate it in your systems to ensure that, that the quality of the data is the right one so that the outputs are the right ones and to integrate this in the processes of the companies. So what we see is a growing frustration with the time it takes, the cost it takes to implement. Um, and there is an important journey there in terms of starting early, starting small, iterating so that we can find the best solutions. And as I said before, partnering up with the people that with the right expertise out there. So if someone, if a company would like to implement AI, the fundamentals are data and processes? That's right. So AI, is, it will be as good as your fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And the fundamentals are the quality of the data and efficient processes. Mm -hmm. If anyone wants to win in the AI economy, they will need to take care of this first before putting AI layers on top of it. Otherwise, it would be a recipe for disaster. You think that this uh, exists in the travel and hospitality industry? I think across the board, most of the companies have a lot of work to do in terms of quality of data. We also have an uh, area of opportunity in terms mm -hmm. of improving the quality of the data. But we put a lot of emphasis into it. It's one of our key priorities because we know that the outcomes that we will get from the use of AI will be entirely dependent on the quality of the data that we have in our systems. And we would like to, to be the devil's advocate, let's say. There will be some more traditional, let's say, entrepreneur that would say, oh, we are in a people's industry. I mean, we have to interact with each other. Machines cannot be involved. What would you reply to them? I would say that there's specific situations where technologies and machines are really, really helpful. Uh, there's information needs that uh, we are all getting more and more used to getting uh, self-service. It's much faster. Uh, it's 24-7. It's always working. It doesn't stop. So there's a lot of easy activity that is much better done by automated processes, better quality, no errors, faster. Then there's part of it that still needs to happen with humans. We keep our teams at the core of what we do. Uh, and whenever we have very difficult cases uh, that require our intervention, that's where we ensure that our teams are taking care of the travelers or our customers. So in the end, what we want to have is the best of both worlds, the best of the technology and the best of having our teams stepping up when that's needed. So we are talking now about conversational AI or interactive AI. What can we expect in the future? I think for the mainly for the travelers, what we will see is more and more conversational planning of the travels. So we will move from travel being organized by going into multiple uh, websites, etc., mm -hmm. or multiple um, different uh, origins to one place, one platform, one app, where through a conversation, mm -hmm. there will be a contextual search, meaning I'm going to provide an input that means I want to travel in October, we are a family of four. Actually, we already know that we are a family of four. Uh, this time I would like to go uh, outdoors somewhere that is um, sunny and hot. This is my budget. This is uh, a few things that I would like to do during that trip. And it will give you completely personalized. It does already does, no? but it's mm -hmm. not embedded in the entire value chain. So we are that, that migration to conversational search is an important trend that we will see over the next months and the next uh, years. And then we will see that AI starts to be embedded into every area, into every company, uh, like uh, computers did, for example, many years ago. If I can uh, organize my own trip, uh, customize the way I need it by using an AI tool, do you think that that would be a, a possible threat to the travel agents in the future? I think it's an evolution mm -hmm. of the travel agents. Uh, but again, in the same way that uh, the introduction of computers and the introduction of internet changed the way uh, this, uh, the industry operates. This will be another adaptation, another evolution. What we see is that actually the younger generations, there's an important part of the younger generations that they rely more on travel advisors for their uh, trip planning. Mm -hmm. uh, and what they want is actually peace of mind. They want more 
unique experiences, more local experiences. They want that knowledge and they also want to be taken care of when, if, when and if something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So I think there, there will be a change and an evolution, but there's actually a very interesting trend by the youngers going more towards the travel advisors. We're looking forward to see what AI will bring to the travel industry. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you.